My very extensive skincare routine. My daily skin routine. I love this Biologique. This is the Sarah Chapman Ultimate Cleanse. I put this on and then I put a 10 minute meditation or manifestation. Some SPF. Moisturizer. Mere lip balm at this very, 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 very precious. With so much misinformation out there about skincare, you just don't know who to trust. You're getting all these actors and models, influencers with their 10 step skincare routine and their 20 something skincare products and they swear by it. They insist that this is the reason why they have clear glass skin. But here's the thing, money is involved. And anytime money is involved, that's when things get interesting. The global skincare market size was valued at $109.71 billion in 2023 and is estimated to grow from $115.65 billion in 2024 to $194 billion by 2032. Now that is a lot of money. And so how much of these products are actually necessary and how many of them are just trying to get you to spend your hard earned money unnecessarily? Hi, for those of you who are new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Matty and I'm a male model. In this video, I will be sharing with you the only three skincare products that you actually need. But before we do that, we have to get these things in check first. So the first thing is that you need to sort out your sleep. A lack of sleep can cause an increase in the hormone cortisol, which is also known as a stress hormone. Stress can cause inflammation, excess oil production, and therefore clogged pores, therefore more acne breakouts. So you want to try and get seven to eight hours of sleep a night and aim to go to bed at the same time every day. Try and adopt a consistent sleep schedule. Other things that might help you reduce stress are exercise, activity, meditation, going to the sauna, and being outdoors. You also wanna make sure that your sleep hygiene is good. So what I mean by this is regularly cleaning your pillowcases and your duvet covers every week. And if you wanna go one step above that, you can actually use paper towels or like a couch roll and put it over your pillowcase every night and replace this on a daily basis. Part of sleep hygiene also includes not having your phone next to you when you sleep. Instead, maybe putting your phone away about an hour before you go to bed, having some downtime. So turning off your computer, stop watching telly, and literally have a non-electronic hour before you go to bed. The third thing you wanna do is to sort out your diet. Now, a lot of dermatologists will say that diet doesn't affect acne and I would be a bad scientist if I sat here and said that it does because there isn't enough quality evidence to link acne with diet. It's not been scientifically proven. However, on an anecdotal and observational level, it's pretty clear that there is some link between acne and diet, or at least improving your diet does help your acne. So cut down processed foods, seed oils, and sugars, your skin will improve and will thank you for it. Okay, now that we've established these essentials, let's get on to the actual skincare. There's the dermatologist approved skincare routine and there's the natural remedy. I'm going to be focusing more on the dermatological skincare routine. However, I will reference the natural skincare routine stuff as well. The first thing that you wanna do is cleanse your skin. Use a cleanser. Now you use the cleanser twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening before bed. You wanna get products that are actually appropriate for your skin type. There are three different skin types, okay? So oily, dry, and combination skin. Here's how you find out. So you wanna to go to the bathroom and wet your face, and then leave it for about 30 to 45 minutes to dry. Do not pat dry it, let it air dry. And after that period of time, go back into a well-lit area, that might be the bathroom. And if your skin is shiny, then you have an oily skin type. If your skin is flaky, then you have a dry skin type. And if your T-zone is oily and your cheeks are dry, for example, so your T-zone would be your forehead, your nose, and your chin. If that is oily and your cheeks are dry, then that means you have combination skin. If you have oily skin, you can use the oily cleanser that Cetaphil produces. If you have dry or combination skin, then the gentle skin cleanser will suffice. Okay, now that you've decided on your cleanser, how do you cleanse? So. It's as simple as wetting your face with lukewarm water and then spending about half a minute massaging the cleanser into your skin before washing it off. Gently, gently washing it off. If you want to go down the natural route, you can just use water. 
The next step is to moisturize your skin, once in the morning and once in the evening before bed. The reason you wanna moisturize your skin is because after you've cleansed, after you've washed it, you've taken some of the extra oils away, you've dried it out a little bit. So you do have to moisturize to keep that moisture in, to keep your skin healthy and glowing. You want to take a generous amount of moisturizer and massage it into the skin. So like the cleanser, you want to make sure that you have a moisturizer that's appropriate for your skin type. If you have dry skin, then of course you want to make sure you get moisturizer specific for your skin type. So ingredients you want to look out for are ceramides, glycerin, shea butter, aloe vera, hyaluronic acid, and niacinamide. For combination skin, you want to select moisturizers with glycolic acid, salicylic acid, hyaluronic acid, vitamin B5, ceramides, vitamin C, and lactic acid. Now, if you have oily skin, then these are the ingredients you wanna look out for in your specific moisturizer. Salicylic acid, niacinamide, and retinol. Now, if you do decide to use a retinol-based moisturizer, then make sure you use it at night or in the evening time and have a separate moisturizer for the daytime that doesn't contain retinol. Research has found that retinol actually makes your skin more sensitive to sunlight. Alternatively, if you want to use retinol separately from your moisturizer, then that can be also recommended. There's been good scientific research to show that retinol reduces fine lines, wrinkles, and acne scars. This is one of the products that I will swear by for most skin types. Of course, you can use aloe vera or if heard, beef tallow. You can use that for a more natural approach. The final product that you need is a sunscreen. A higher SPF is ideal, for example, 50 plus. It will protect you from UV damage, which if left unchecked can cause irreversible skin damage and aging over time in the form of dark spots. The thing about UV damage is that it accumulates over time underneath your skin and only after a number of years or decades will it come to the surface and you'll see just how much the sun has damaged your skin. Sunlight can also flare up active breakouts. You can get sunscreen specifically for the face and it has to be non-comedogenic, i.e. it will not block pores. Using sunscreen is pretty self-explanatory. Take a generous amount onto your hands and then massage it gently into your face, your ears, and your neck. People forget that, and that's why they get burnt on their ears and their neck. And then you want to reapply it every few hours that you've been in the sun, or definitely after it gets wet, if you've been for a swim, or if you've done some exercise and you sweated it off. A bonus product that you can get is an exfoliant. Specifically, a chemical exfoliant would be ideal. This would exfoliate your skin without having to use any sort of scrub. And you want to use it a maximum of two times a week after you've cleansed your skin. Now, I hope that you found this video useful. If you follow these tips, then you're going to have clear skin, obviously. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. I'm on my own, broken alone. I feel the rain crashing down. All around this empty town. I'm searching for the lost and found.